One hundred days of inferno. Sit down, grab a snack or two, and enjoy the video. On day one, I spawn in and I turn on inferno. And then I hear this creepy laugh play when I turn it on. This is not gonna be fun. I instantly enter a cave right next to my spawn point. I find a bit of ore and instantly die to a boulder. I find a chest, but I die again because it was a dead man's chest. I go back and the chest had a band of regeneration. I then find a glowing mushroom biome and find not one, not two, but three life crystals. I also find a mushroom shrine and get the fungal symbiote. It increases true melee damage. So I had an idea of going true melee for this playthrough. After mining some more ores, I went back home. It was night at the time, so I just built a box around myself and waited. I did not want to die. On day two, I start building my base. Right now it looks really bad, but trust me, I'll improve it later. The merchant moves in and I buy a piggy bank from him. I then go looting again. I then manage to find yet another life crystal. And then another. I then die to the underground ice plant. I then venture up because Calamity has these planetoids that spawn in space. I then found a really big planetoid that contained a lab. This was the planetoid lab. The chest I found actually contained a lot of nice things like gravitation potions, a lot of gold, planter boxes, and more. On day 3, I use a gravitation potion and go exploring the sky. I find a planetoid that contained a lot of silver, I then find one containing a lot of iron, I then find a small planetoid that contained a life crystal and some emeralds. I instantly die to some harpies after that. <laughs> I had more gravitation potions, so this time I explore to the left, and I find a sky island with fledgling wings. I keep hunting for planetoids and sky islands. I end up with a lot of good loot. I get many life crystals, a shiny red balloon, many gems, and a star fury. I make myself some golden armor. But then, I saw that I could craft life crystals with the rubies I got. So I made a few, and now I have max health. Nice. I then venture to the left of the world to find the jungle. I look for some jungle spores and stingers to get the blade of grass. In Calamity, true melee weapons have been buffed not only in size, but in damage as well. I then try to work on my magic storage system. I then go to the crimson to grind for leather. I need a leather in the first place to craft the feral claws. Calamity added a recipe for crafting feral claws, which is pretty nice. So after grinding vertebrae in the crimson, I craft the feral claws. On day 5, I ventured into the crimson again and crafted the slime crown. While I was there, I also broke two crimson hearts because I wanted the goblin army to spawn. However, I then summoned the king slime. I quickly learned that he dealt a ton of damage to me, and I quickly died. On day 6, a slime rain occurred. I just kept killing slimes until the king slime spawned again. And I died. Great. So I tried again. And again. And again. On day 7, while I was trying to kill the king slime, the goblins attacked me, so I showed them who's boss. Now back to the pain of king slime. I continued to fight the king slime until day 8, but I just kept dying. So I just take a break and build for a bit. However, on day 9, an evil presence watches me. But I just go to the underground and wait until it's daytime again. I'm both physically and mentally unprepared for this boss, so I don't want to fight it just yet. On day 10 and 11, I just kept building. On day 12, I stopped building and go back to fighting King Slime. Eventually, I managed to kill it. The King Slime's lore. Only a fool could be caught by this pitiful excuse for a hunter. Unfortunately, our world has no shortage of those. After I fought the King Slime, I made an instant elevator using Fargo's mutant mod. 
I kept exploring underground because not only did I want to find the Goblin Tinker, but also Life Crystals to make Heart Lanterns. I eventually find the Goblin by some Rocket Boots and a Tinker's Workshop. I then make myself some Spectre Boots. I then go to the underground and make a box and walled up. Why? I wanted to do the Torch God event. On day 13, before fighting the Torch God, I used some Insta Houses to spawn some more NPCs. I needed as much NPCs as possible. I then fought the Torch God, and actually completed the first try. So on day 14, I prepare a quick arena for the Desert Scourge. I then go to the underground desert to farm Antline and Stormline mandibles to craft the Desert Medallion. So then I summon the Desert Scourge. It had some really cool attacks, and I died, but I actually got pretty low. Now that I knew what to expect, I go back and summon it again. I kept dying, and at one point I got very close to death. But then a Blood Moon occurred. I killed some Blood Moon enemies to try and get the Shark Tooth Necklace, and I actually got the Shark Tooth Necklace and the Money Drop. I also got a lot of money from the Blood Moon, so I reforged my accessories on day 15. I then fought the Desert Scourge once more. We absolutely destroyed it. The Desert Scourge's lore. The Great Sea Worm appears to have survived the extreme heat and has even adapted to it. What used to be a majestic beast swimming through the water has now become a dried up and gluttonous husk, constantly on a voracious search for its next meal. I then go to the underground and mine out an arena to make an underground house. I finish mining it out on day 16. I then spent the entire day building my underground base. On day 17, I fought the Desert Scourge one more time. I then crafted the Victide armor set. I then fight the Eye of Cthulhu. The Eye of Cthulhu's lore. That eye, how peculiar. I sensed it watching you more intensely as you grew stronger. I opened up the treasure bag and equipped the Shield of Cthulhu. On day 18, I just built my desert house. Once it turned night, I killed the eye again for some more money. On day 19, I received the message of a toxic downpour in the wasteland seas. So I go and check out the Sulphur Sea. However, me being the idiot that I am, I went to the wrong side and I encountered the normal ocean. At that time, the acid rain was already over, so while I was there, I just built an ocean house. On day 20, I kept just building and decorating houses. I kept decorating houses and then went to the underground desert. I wanted to find the sunken sea and kill the giant clam. However, Infernum actually reworks the giant clam as well, so I died. I then proceed to buy 30 iron skin potions from one of the quality of life NPCs. Why? I wanted 30 stack potion buffs. Some people may consider it cheating, but I don't. You'll be seeing me use this feature a lot during the playthrough. On day 21, I kept dying to a giant clam. I decided to just leave it for later since it wasn't really going to give me good loot. Since it was just a mini boss. I go to the crimson and craft the bloody spine. And then summon the brain and try my luck. I got completely and utterly destroyed. I then farmed the Desert Scourge for some money. 
then I tried the Brain of Cthulhu again on day 22, but I failed. I then instead work on an arena in my underground mushroom bomb because I want to try to fight the Crabulon instead. So I then go to the Crimson and craft the Decapodita Sprout, and then summon the Crabulon. But what did you really expect? Of course I died. I then actually prepared, using a campfire and a heart lantern as well as making an actual platform. When I tried again, I got to 50% but I ended up dying, so I knew it was possible. But before trying again, on day 23, I went to the sulfur seed to do the first tier of the acid rain, since an acid rain was happening. I cleared it pretty easily. I then tried the crabulon one more time. Crabulon's lore. A crab and its mushrooms, a love story. It's interested how creatures can adapt given certain circumstances. I got a mushroom plasma root, which increased the duration of my rage for one second. I then tried to fight the brain again, but I died. I kept trying and kept dying. However, the more times I tried, the closer I got, but I didn't beat it yet. On day 24, a party was happening, so I got some cake. I kept trying to kill the brain of Cthulhu, and eventually I got it. The Brain of Cthulhu's Lore An eye and now a brain Most likely another abomination spawned from this inchoate mass of flesh I then craft a Deathbringer pickaxe and go down to the underworld and mine up some hellstone I recall back and proceed to forget that I didn't get a hellforge so I go back and get one I buy some obsidian from one of the quality of life NPCs and craft a bunch of hellstone bars I use those hellstone bars to craft myself the molten armor set and the fury greatsword I then grab a few more 30 stat potions. On day 25, I upgrade my magic storage system using Crimtain and Hellstone storage upgrades. I then kill the King Slime again for the slime mount. I then go to the underground to look for the tavern keep so I can attempt the old one's army, since it was the next event on the boss checklist. After like 10 minutes of looking, I found him. While I waited for the tavern keep to move in, I went to the sunken sea to attempt to kill the giant clam mini boss again. Somehow I managed to die again. I'll leave it for later as we have more important things to do. I prepared the old one's army arena and at night, I summon it. It was actually pretty easy. On day 26, a goblin army occurred. But I just ignored it and instead I tried my luck with the perforators but I died. I quickly dispose of the goblin army and go back to try finding the perforators again, but I died. I kept trying and kept dying. On day 27, I reforged all my items and accessories, in hopes that maybe I can beat the perforators, but no I couldn't. I kept trying until day 28 and kept failing. But I was getting closer, now a blood moon prevented me from trying again, so I just waited until the blood moon ended. On day 29, I farmed a lot of desert scourges for money. I then bought a lot of 30 stack potions. I just wanted to beat the perforators. And then finally, I beat it.
Perforator's lore. An abomination of commingled flesh, bone, and organ, infested primarily by blood slurping worms. The chunks left over from the brain must have been absorbed by the crimson and reconstituted into it. This was by far the hardest boss I encountered in this playthrough. So far. On day 30, I mined up a lot of area light. I also prepared an arena in the dungeon since I wanted to fight Skeletron. On day 31, I knew that true melee was probably not going to cut it for all the bosses. And I learned that the hard way with the perforator's boss fight. So I decided to make a switch to the ranger class. I crafted some arrow spec armor and then crafted the gale force bow. However, I saw that it did really low damage, so I just switched to Molten Fury. I then prepared to fight Skeletron, but Blood Moon occurred the night I tried to fight Skeletron. But I tried to fight him anyways and I died. I waited out the Blood Moon in my underground house until day 32. On day 32, I went through the process of crafting the Terra Spark boots. A lot of the items I needed were craftable, so it was pretty easy to make. I then tried to fight Skeletron again, but I died. I then tried to prepare as much as possible for this fight, since I only get to fight it once every night. First off, I go to the underground jungle again, and I find a beehive and grab a few honey buckets. The honey buff can help so much with its regeneration buffs. I then make the arena longer and prepare some campfires. On days 33 and 34, I prepared the heart lanterns and honey pools. I summoned Skeltron again, and I somehow managed to die right at the start. So I decided to do a funny and try the Slime God instead. Now if you don't know, the Slime God is supposed to be the boss you fight after Skeletron. However, I tried it now because why not? And I actually did pretty good. So then I try again. And even though I wasn't expecting to beat it, this happened. This was by far the longest fight I've ever done. It took so long. The Slime God's Lore It is a travesty, one of the most threatening biological terrors ever created. If this creature were allowed to combine every slime on the planet, it would become nearly unstoppable. I got the Electrolyte Gel Pack from the Slime God, which gives a 15% boost to my adrenaline and an increase to my damage reduction by 5%. I then made the Stata Gel armor set using Hellstone Bars and Purified Gel. I also made the Gubo, which fired two streams of slime while firing the arrow. It was way better than my Molten Fury. When I attempted Skeltron again, I still died getting it to 47%. I don't know how I'm dying to this stupid boss. On day 35, I started working on a jungle house. I then tried Skeltron again, but I died. However, this time I got really close, so I know I could do it. I sleep until the night of day 36 and then I try Skeltron one more time.
Skeltron's lore. This curse is said to only affect the elderly. After they are afflicted, they become an immortal vessel for an ancient demon of the underworld. I then go inside the dungeon, I rescue the mechanic and get a cobalt shield. I also get the shadow key and after that I leave, because those two items were all I was really looking for. On day 37 I craft the skyline wings, which are way better than my fledgling wings. I then work on an arena next to a beehive in my underground jungle. Since I'm planning to fight the queen bee, I finish the arena on day 38 and I try to fight the queen bee. However, I don't even die. Instead, the queen bee despawns. Why? I don't even know. I try again and this time I actually die. I then kill the brain of Cthulhu again for some money. On day 39, I decide to make a trip to the underground jungle to get a boomstick to craft a new weapon called the Aqua Shard Shotgun. At first I thought it was pretty underwhelming, but then I tested it out against the Queen Bee, and it actually shredded. Queen Bee's lore, as crude as the giant insects are, they can prove useful in certain situations, given the ability to control them. On day 40 I summoned the deer cops. I got it pretty low but I actually died. I kept trying and I died a few times but in the end I managed to beat it. On day 42, I just spent a lot of time building. From days 43 to 45, I did some grinding for all my weapons and accessories before entering hard mode. First off, I grinded for the overloaded blaster and the gunk shot, which are both really cool ranger weapons. The overloaded blaster fires these gel projectiles that look really cool and do good damage. And the gunk shot is a very overpowered shot. I reforged all my weapons and accessories and also killed the giant clan. From days 46 to 53 I just built a lot. I spent day 54 and 55 creating a mob farm. This will be really useful for grinding certain items that I need in hard mode. On day 56 I used the double obsidian insta bridge in my underworld to use for my wall of flesh fight. I then proceeded to put as much heart lanterns, campfires, and honey pools as possible. However, while I was traveling the underworld, I found this new weird biome. I never saw it in normal calamity, so I'm guessing it's an Infernum exclusive biome. I'm guessing it's for the future. But let's push that aside for now. On day 57, I tried my first fight with the Wall of Flesh. Alright, I'm still using the Wall of Fishron texture pack. Anyways, I actually did pretty good and got to less than half health, so I knew it was just a matter of trying until I killed it. I kept trying, and at one point, I beat it.
well of flesh's lore. I see the deed is done. The unholy amalgamation of flesh and hatred has been defeated. Prepare to face the terrors that lurk in the light and dark parts of this world. So now we're in a hard mode. Things are about to get way more painful than before. On day 58, I mine up a lot of cobalt and palladium to make a new armor set. I can't get higher tiers of hard mode ore, since the other ores generate when the mechanical bosses are defeated. I then tried to find an earth elemental to get the slag magnum, but for some reason I couldn't. However, I killed a mimic and got the philosopher stone, which is pretty nice. I then ventured to the left of the world to find the brimstone crag, so I could farm some essences of chaos for the butcher, the weapon I was planning to craft. I crafted the butcher, and it's a gun that's really slow at first, but the longer you shoot it, the faster it gets. I then farmed the wall flesh until day 59, but I didn't get the ranger on for some reason. So I just bought the treasure bag from one of the quality of life NPCs and I got it. I then farmed some wyverns for souls of flight and crafted the fairy wings, which replaced my skyline wings. The fairy wings also gave me an additional 60 max life, which is cool. I then grinded some enemies in the ocean until day 60 to get the pirate map. And on day 60, I fought the pirate invasion. It was pretty easy. The next boss on the list was the queen slime. So I searched for a gelatin crystal, but while I was searching, an earth elemental spawns and kills me. Of course, an earth elemental doesn't spawn when I'm looking for it, but when I'm not ready and in my most vulnerable state, an earth elemental spawns and kills me. I hate this game. And also, for some reason, I wasn't even able to find one gelatin crystal. I then see that Calamity adds a recipe for crafting the gelatin crystal. So I craft one immediately, and on day 61, I summoned the Queen Slime and died. I tried again and died once again, but this time I got it really low. I kept trying and I still died, so before trying again, I upgraded my loadout. I reforged all my items, got more buffs and more. So on day 62, I killed the Queen Slime. <laughs> marks the first boss defeated in hard mode. I then spent until day 63 making an arena for the cryogen, the next boss I want to fight. While I was farming for essences of Ilium to make the cryo key, this happened. I feel like I'm going through every single emotion at once. Pain, confusion, anger, helplessness, and now a happiness because I can craft this damned crowd key. And on day 64, I fought the crowd gen. <laughs> The Cryogen's lore, the Archmage's prison. I am unsure if it has grown weaker over the decades of imprisonment. I then bought another Cryogen treasure bag since I didn't feel like farming another Cryogen, so I could get the Effluvium bow, 
which is a really good bow that fires two arrows at once. I then went in my mob farm to try and get a magic quiver, however for some reason I couldn't even get one. So on day 65 I crafted the magic quiver instead of farming for it. I then thought I was ready for my first mechanical boss, the twins, and on day 65 I fought the twins. First try as well, I'm just built different. The Twins Lore The biomechanical watchers of the night, originally created as security using the souls extracted from human eyes. These creatures did not belong in this world, it's best to be rid of them. On day 66 I make the seafood which spawns the aquatic scourge. I then build an arena in the sulfur sea and then fought the aquatic scourge. <laughs> Aquatic Scourge Lore, a horror born of pollution and insatiable hunger. Based on size alone, this was merely a juvenile. These Scourge creatures are the largest aquatic predators, and very rarely do they frequent such shallow waters. The instant I killed the Aquatic Scourge, an acid rain started happening. This time it was the second tier, so I cleared it. And that night, I fought the Destroyer. The Destroyer's Lore, a machine brought to life by the mighty souls of warriors, and built to excavate massive tunnels and planets to gather resources. Could have proven useful if Draydon didn't have an obsession with turning everything into a tool of destruction. On day 67, I go to the Brimstone Crag and prepare some honey pools, heart lanterns, and campfires, since I'm planning to fight the Brimstone Elemental next. However, before doing any of that, I mined up some titanium to make a titanium arm set, as now we have access to titanium and adamantine, since we killed two mechanical bosses, I then made the charred idol and summoned the brimstone elemental. <laughs> Thank you.
Brimstone Elementals lore. The most powerful of the Elementals, bent on exacting revenge upon the bloody inferno that demolished her home. Finally put to rest, she will suffer no longer from the grief caused by the deaths of her people. On day 68, I venture into the underground snow biome to mine up some cryonic ore. I then crafted the Daedalus armor, as well as the Ornate shield, which is basically just a better version of my shield of Cthulhu. I then fought Skeletron Prime. Skeltron Prime's lore. What a silly and pointless contraption for something created with the essence of pure terror. Dradon obviously took several liberties with its design. I am not impressed. After a hard mode began, it had just been a big boss rush, so for the last 30 days, I just wanted to chill, take a break, and do some building and grind for a few things. So on day 69, I killed the Aquatic Scourge a few times to get the Seas Serum. And on day 70, I managed to get the Seas Serum. I tried it out against the Aquatic Surge, and honestly, it was kind of underwhelming. I was expecting this thing to shred it, but I didn't really feel like it was worth the grunt. So I tried getting a different weapon called the Air Ballast. So I bought some Twins treasure bags and I got it, and it was much better than the Sea Searing. I then made the Angel Treads, an upgrade to my Terra Spark Boots. I then made the Balcry, a Fargo's Mean Mod item that allows me to either increase the spawn rates or decrease them. Then from days 71 to 81, I just built a lot of houses. I built a house in my astral biome for the astral pylon. I built a house in my sulfurous sea for the sulfurous pylon. I built a house in my sunken sea for the sunken sea pylon. And I built a house in my brimstone crag for the brimstone pylon. On days 82 and 83, I do a lot of upgrading and grinding. I craft the ink shield, I reforge my items, and I also grind a lot of eye of Cthulhu's for some money. And I do the second tier of the old one's army. Why? Well, I just wanted to. From days 84 to 86, I worked on a house in space. From days 87 to 89, I worked on a house in my hallowed biome, but I forgot to record. The funny thing is, right when I finished the house, that's when I realized I wasn't recording. So, here's what it looks like being finished. On day 90, I just grind some more eyes for some more money, and then buy the rod of discord from the wizard. On day 91, I go on another trip to the underground jungle to get a lot of life fruit to maximize my health. And I get a lot. In fact, I get so much that it's enough to maximize my health completely. It makes sense since Calamity increases life fruit rates. I also make a surface glowing mushroom biome. On days 92 and 93, I built a house in my surface glowing mushroom biome so I can get the truffle to move in and get the mushroom pylon. So now we have every single pylon we can get our hands on, but there's still a few things we need to do before the 100 days finishes. So I crafted a temple key and went inside the temple to see if I can find a solar tablet. Yes, yeah, so you can go inside the temple before Plantera, since Calamity allows you to craft a temple key before Plantera is killed. However, I die inside the temple because of the unholy amount of traps and enemies, but it's fine since I already got a solar tablet. And on day 94 I summoned the solar eclipse to see what loot I can get my hands on. I got a lot of things, but I got the two things I was looking for. The bat hook and the broken bat wing. The bat hook is better than my current hook, and I used the broken bat wing to craft the bat wings, which replaced my fairy wings. I also made an artificial corruption by me killed the hive mind. Why? Well why not? I just wanted to kill it purely for fun. At this point I didn't really know what to do. I had already killed every possible boss so far, done every event so far, and built every single pylon. So I decided to see if I could kill one more boss, the Calamitous Clone. So I crafted the Eye of Desolation and tried out the Calamitous Clone. <laughs>
I didn't really expect to beat this boss first try, but we beat it, so that's pretty cool. On day 95, I killed a lot of Eater of Worlds just for some money. I also destroyed the big hotel that I made, just because it looked bad. And since all the NPCs were living in my pylon base, it's now. I was wondering what to do for the last few days. I then realized that I had been using Ranger for a long time, and remembered how I switched from True Melee to Ranger. So I decided, why not go back to True Melee? I didn't want to switch completely, I just wanted to play some True Melee along with my Ranger gear. It's probably a horrible decision, but it might be fun. So I crafted the Daedalus Melee helmet, and then crafted the Mechanical Glove. I then crafted the Biome Blade, and used the Desert Attunement on it since that was the True Melee Attunement. Then on day 96, I tested this new loadout out on the Queen Slime, and it actually shredded. I wasn't able to hit it much, since the Queen Slime in Infernum usually stays out of range. But even taking that into account, it still did really good. I then start working on making the Codebreaker, this thing that unlocks new weapons and reads schematics. I then spend the rest of day 96, 97, and 98 upgrading the Codebreaker. I needed a lot of drain on power cells, so that's why it took a long time. I didn't upgrade it fully since you need to be in endgame to upgrade it to its max, but I ended up getting it to the long sensor array. On day 99, I just built some things in decoration. And now, day 100. I didn't really know what to do on day 100, but I wanted to do something special. So I decided to see if I could beat all three mechanical bosses at once. And of course I died. Well, that's one of the days. My channel is dead currently, so please like and subscribe so it can get revived. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully I can make 200 days of Infernum soon. See ya.